Hi friends of the 3D printed lithophony, my name is Michael Fabos and in this video tutorial I would like to reveal some of my secrets of lithophanes from 3D printers, especially my method of making them. Uh, this method was pretty much requested on the 3D printing Facebook group a couple of weeks ago, so I will give you a short introduction into lithophanes, what they are, how they work and where they come from. And in the second part of the video, we will go through the basic workflow I use from the picture all the way to the lithophanes in your hands. And in the last, but actually not the least part, actually the most important part of this video, I will go through all the adjustment screws you have available and the settings which make your lithophane really impressive. So before we start, I have two comments from my side. The first one is, I'm quite into video editing, but this is my very first um, video tutorial. And as you might have noticed, I'm not a native English speaker. So if you have any suggestions, critics or comments, let me know in the comment section below. The second note I have to point on you is this method I show you is just one way of doing it. You can make lithophanes in, just manually in any modeling software like Blender or 3ds Max, Maya or something. Um, but this is well overshot and um, you can do it even more basic, direct in your slicing software like uh, Cura or uh, Simplify 3D or Slicer. Most of those tools have um, built-in tools to make pictures into uh, lithophanes. But this method I show you right now uses an online tool and I think it gives, gives me the most control and the best chance of getting um, real impressive lithophanes on a real quick way. So I would say let's get started. The idea of lithophony is not really new. Invented in 1827 by a French, lithophanes were thin and translucent plates of china that became very popular little treasures in civil houses in the mid-19th century. And how do they actually work? Lithophanes are basically thin plates of translucent material, which you see edge on in this illustration. If lit from behind, we have a certain luminosity of the material on the other side. But if we have some embossments on the front side of the lithophane, we have different levels of light intensity coming through on this part, so we have different um, bright or less bright areas. And as you can actually see, the thicker the material is, the less intense the light is coming through, of course. Um, the contrast of the picture, the local contrast, is dependent on the steepness of the flanks, so the relief of the embossment on the back side. So the higher the gradient, the higher the contrast, the lower the gradient, the lower the contrast. So far for the introduction into lithophanes, um, let's jump into my basic workflow. You see this picture of me having flown this glider and um, when I upload it into the online tool, um, the online tool just converts it in the background into a grayscale picture because the color information is not needed for the embossments. So Let's have a quick look into a grayscale picture version of this one. I just converted into a grayscale um, image. And what you see is that the nice tones and the nice contrast between the colors is mostly lost. It's a very flat picture. We have a good contrast on my face with a cap and the, and the glasses, but the contrast on the plane is pretty much lost. So by converting this um, into a grayscale picture, or if we let the tool do this for us in the background, we lose a lot of control over the overall contrast of the picture. So what I usually do is I add a grayscale adjustment layer and with that one I have a really nice control how much each color tone influences the grayscale of the picture. So I can adjust the red tones separately from the yellow tones, green ones or blue ones and their influence on the picture. So with this we have a good chance to um, adjust the contrast of different colored areas in our lithophane and I do this with Photoshop because I already have it. You can use any other uh, image processing 
program on the market. There are even free ones. Um, you can, if you don't have any chance for an image um, imaging program, you can skip this step, but you lose a lot of control over the contrast and the quality of the picture and the lithophane. We just set up the, um, the grayscale right now. And what I usually do is I add another adjustment layer, a levels adjustment layer, and I just make sure that the contrast is pretty high so that the black color tones are pretty much near the black line, which is on the left line here on the, on the uh, histogram. And you can just pull that uh, regulator over here. And if you hold the Alt key while you turn this, you can see which areas in the pictures are flooding completely into black. We don't want to have that pretty much. If we are just close to it, this is fine. Same on the white levels. Well, we have already bright areas in the pictures. If you hold the Alt key, uh, those areas will light up in white. So this picture had already a nice contrast with the black and uh, white tones. Uh, we kind of just hear the overall brightness of the picture, but I, this is fine already, so we're done. Let's quickly export our picture as a JPEG, and we are ready to upload it to our uh, online tool that will make our litho for us. So I saved the file as a JPEG on my hard drive and we upload it into our online tool on 3dp.rocks um, slash lithophane. We have the preview area in the, in the, in the mid, the enough bar in the top. Um, down there we have uh, the different models that are available. I usually stick with the curved ones or the flat ones. We use a flat one on this. I click on images and just select the file for upload and then it should show up in the preview section. If it does not show up, that's a little bug, sometimes it happens, just click on your desired model again and refresh, and then it will show up. Then we make sure in the image settings that we are choosing a positive image, and to really make sure that we are doing it right, just go back to the uh, preview and look at the picture. The bright areas of the picture should be the lowered ones and the dark areas should be the rosen ones. So on the model settings we set the size which is here a value of the longest side of the lithophane in millimeters. The thickness value basically gives us um, the darkest tone in our lithophane depending on the material we are printing at. So for white PLA I figured out 4 is um, nice to go. Um, if you choose other materials to print you have to experiment on it uh, and just adjust this value. Um, border gives us a nice frame around our picture in millimeters and the thinnest layer is basically the brightest tone, the, the the white tone of the lithophane and should be slightly above your extrusion width. I have 0.4 extrusion width so I chose 0.5 millimeters as a thinnest layer. The vectors per pixel um, basically gives is the adjustment for the detail and it goes from 0 to 10 and they recommend 2 to 5. I recommend at least 4 as 2 is really uh, bad detail. Stick with 4 and maybe test 5, it's really nice. If your browser doesn't crash, use this. The file gets bigger though, but I think it's worth it. The base or stamp depth, I will show you real quick. But first, let's have a look on our picture, on our lithophane. Uh, we just click refresh and preview, and this is our nice lithophane. So the base or stamp depth value is uh, controlling a basic stand coming out from the litho at the at the bottom area. If you choose a negative value, like minus 15, I am just choosing right now, um, this will give you a stand um, created on the back side of the litho. Just ref click refresh and we will see it. So there is our stand. If you choose a positive value, the stand will come up out in the front part, which is mostly not desired. But anyway, we want to do it flat again, so we choose zero. Refresh, and the preview is nice. Go ahead and click download. So we just downloaded our STL, 
and I just drag it from the download history into Simplify 3D, which is my favorite slicer. And here we just make have to make sure that the model is standing upright, so we rotate, rotate it by uh, minus 90 degrees. Uh, this is for better quality. If you don't do this, um, you will have bad quality on the lithophane. I will explain the reason for this in the third part of the video. So we just check the backside is closed, so the model was created fine. We set up our um, extruder settings, use a layer height of 0.1 millimeters or less for good quality, uh, just your top layers, bottom layers as you wish, and then down here um, set a outline perimeter shell value that makes sure that the model is completely filled by perimeter shells and not by infill. We want to have 100% infill but not by regular um, infill but by the outline perimeters. I just figured out that this gives a really nice quality. Print inside out, so the nozzle is um, well primed when it comes to the outer perimeter. I use a brim um, when I have no stand on the model um, to help it to stay upright during the print. And here we just click no infill. We print with no support either and you should uh, check your temperatures should be fine and on the uh, speed choose a quite low value because we have lots of details to be printed here and we don't have a want to have any swinging here uh, ruin our small details on the on the plate so i just click prepare to print and it will slice for a second i fast forward here a little bit because it's a re really detailed model and it takes some time So about 30 seconds later we have our sliced model. The back is closed still, so our settings were right. Um, we go through all the layers to check that the model is sliced nicely. And what we really have to make sure is that there are no holes in, so that our extrusion width um, in combination with the minimum layer thickness is um, pretty much good and we go through all the areas to identify possible problematic areas for printing with um, steep overhangs, for instance. So this looks really good, really nice. And sometimes you have some problematical areas, like here it will be the very top border area on the right side, because we have a steep overhang, as you can see here. And if your printer is not very good in bridging, you will have some problems here. That's fine for me. So I just save it to my SD and we're ready to print. So I just uh, saved the file to the SD card and inserted it into the printer. And I open up Octopi here, clean the nozzle real quick. And as the printer is already preheated, uh, let's check this real quick. Yep, the printer is preheated. We just select our file and click load and print. And then we have a check. The, st the printer just starts and we are fine to watch the scene. So far about the basic workflow I use, uh, right now I would like to talk about the things you can do wrong or you should do right. The first thing we are talking about is printing orientation. Uh, most people are printing their lithophanes flat, so you have the original picture right now, and some of the lithophanes on the web look like this. And this is mainly because the people are printing it flat. So, for an example, we have a stripe within our picture of a specific gradient like this. And if you want to have this gradient in our later lithophane, we have to produce this kind of profile, um, which you just have to see as a cut through the lithophane. So 
if we are printing flat, we can't achieve this profile. So our slicer is slicing this profile into different layers and the height of those layers is fixed. And this is why we are getting fixed steps and fixed layer islands uh, within our lithophane. And this causes this kind of stepped gradient and not a continuous gradient as it is desired. And the pattern we are creating with this is dependent on the uh, maximum thickness we just chosen on the settings in the tool and by the minimum thickness. And the third parameter that is influencing those islands is the layer height we are printing at. And with this formula, we are able to calculate the number of different gray shades we can produce with the printing flat. So the number of shades is the difference between the maximum thickness and the minimum thickness divided by layer height. So for instance, if we've chosen a max thickness of four millimeters and a min thickness of 0.5 millimeters, and we are printing at um, a layer height of 0.2, we can create only 18 different shades of gray. So have a look how this looks like. This is the original picture. Uh, right now reduced to 20 gray shades, 15, 12 shades. Now we have just nine shades, eight shades, seven shades, and even six, and this looks pretty horrible. This is the reason why we want to print our lithophane upright and not laying flat, because if we are printing flat, the z-axis is limiting our number of gray shades and if we consider a 8-bit jpeg file we have 255 different shades we can display but if we're printing flat we just get only 18 maybe less maybe just 10 different shades of gray and this is a huge loss of quality and impression on the lithophane so some guy may now say well now we have pointing the z-axis with its worst resolution in one direction of our picture. And that this is not the ruin the quality of our picture at all, uh, we have a little look into this zoomed section of our picture. If we zoom in further, you can see individual pixels. And to retain the resolution of the picture, our slicer has to slice in the z-axis a layer height that is um, at or even smaller than the height of the pixel layers and therefore we can do some math here the layer height is the limiting factor so if we want to print a lethal at a specific height with a specific resolution in the z direction uh, we can calculate the required layer height by the height of the lethal that is desired uh, divided by the count of the pixels we have in the z direction uh, the other way around we can even calculate the required maximum height of the litho if we have a fixed layer height we, we want to print at and the amount of pixels we have in that direction. So this is pretty helpful as you can even calculate at a given resolution of your picture and a given height of your litho what your best layer height would be to get a good trade-off between resolution and print speed. So before we talked about the print orientation and the resolution of our picture and right now it's time to talk about contrast. Our picture has a really nice contrast already but um, what if we had a picture that didn't? And I have to cheat a little bit for this so I just just imagine we have a picture like this so the, the black is not, not really saturated and even the white value is not um, at its maximum. You can see this is in the histogram. Um, people that are used to histogram might get bored for the uh, next 30 seconds, but I'm going to explain uh, basically the histogram. A histogram is a diagram that shows the numbers of pixels laying in different grayscales. So the line on the left corresponds to the black value, the line on the right corresponds to the white value. And all the grayscales laying between black and white are shown on the uh, x-axis and you can see the height of each bar here corresponds to the number or the amount of pixels having this brightness value. So you can see in this picture, as I cheated a little bit, you can see that there are almost no values on the um, near black area and there are no pixels in the near white area. 
So we can improve this. Just assume that our light source is shining from the right side. And our histogram shows us the different thickness values from the minimum thickness, which corresponds to the white line on the right of the histogram, and the maximum thickness value, which is lying on the, on the left side at the black line. If we don't use the whole range of the histogram from the black to the white line, and we have empty spaces here on the, on the left or here on the right, we're actually wasting grayscales in our lithophane. So our goal should be to pull the black line all the way up to the left end of our histogram. And if you press and hold the Alt key while doing this, you see by what time, by what value, our dark tones are flooding complete into black. We don't want to have this, uh, so we just want to stay slightly below it, but very close to the left end. We do the same for the white line. We pull the white level down to the right end of our histogram. Uh, if you press and hold the Alt key, you see by what time the bright areas will flood completely into white. Stay out of this, stay a little bit right of it, but very close to it. So when you've done this, you see that our histogram is spreading all the way from the black to the white line, and we are using the whole scale, and this is what we want to achieve. And uh, if we compare uh, between the original picture that I cheated a little bit, which is really flat, and the modified image, you see that we are using a huge contrast, and this will give us the best result on the lithophane. So far about the contrast within our picture, but the contrast on our lithophane depends on some more things. The first thing is our contrast lays between the minimum thickness and the maximum thickness of our lithophane. But the minimum thickness is limited by the extrusion width we are printing at. So uh, basically we have open space for the um, maximum thickness. But this value has also some kind of limit. It's a weak limit, but uh, it is basically limited by the translucency of your material or either the intensity of your light source. So if you want to use candles as a light source, um, you should go back to a less thick lithophane. But if you intend anyway to light it up by a 50 watt bulb, well, then you can even go up. So actually you have to test for your material what's the best value. For white PLA, I just found that um, four millimeters is fine, even if you light it up with a candle or with an electric bulb. Now let's talk about the vectors per pixel value and the settings of our online tool. To show you the difference, I just created a simple 20 by 60 pixel wide image with a stepped grayscale from black to white. And in the middle, I just added a black line to have a really steep contrast overall. I loaded this into our online tool and created different models with different vector per pixel values. I chose 2, 4, 5, and 10. On the 2, you can see that the black line doesn't even show up. On the 4, it does show up, but actually the contrast is not really high. At the 5, it's really nice estimation. At the 10, is perfect, but actually it gives us a too detailed model that is hard to slice as it's a real big file. I would probably go for the 5 because it's a really good trade-off, a good estimation of the picture. If I turn the model around, you see that the flanks of the steps are really steeper, getting a higher vector per pixel value, and uh, this retains a good contrast and good quality of our picture. So my recommendation is go for the 5, if that doesn't work in your browser, go back to 4, but aim for the 5 if that works for you. So at the end, I would like to talk about my preferred infill pattern on printing lithophanes. If you're printing with a standard infill pattern and using solid infill, then you create those diagonal lines. So here, this picture, we have two outline perimeter shells and a diagonal solid infill. And this produces these small gaps at the turning points of the infill. If you set your uh, extrusion even higher, then this is not a gap, so we might have some over-extrusion here. But anyway, I just figured out that this adds some grain to the picture in the lithophane. It's very subtle, but to prevent that, I just chose a higher outline perimeter shell value. So if we just switch off the solid infill and select a higher value of the outline perimeter shells. We can see that our slicer just added more outline perimeter shells and the regular infill is very tiny and more inside the model. And this doesn't 
add much grain to the picture and that is what we desire to have a good quality and as you can see the print time didn't increase very much so this is my preferred method for infill so by now i'm done and i hope you enjoyed our little tutorial here and i wish you happy printing <laughs>